<laughs> Huge shakeup at the top of the draft this weekend. The Celtics deciding, nope, they don't need Markel Fultz. The Sixers deciding, well, thank you very much. We will take him. <laughs> that is quite a potential core they are putting together in Philly. I know Sixers fans who are, well, still drunk this morning after that. But as for Boston, the Celtics get the third pick this year. First rounder in either 2018, 2019. There's a very complicated system of protections yes. going on with all of this. But overall, is this a good move for Boston? And also... What is the end game for Danny Ainge? What do you guys think? Well, I mean, first of all, it's possible for this to be a good move for both sides. Mm -hmm. That's what people mm -hmm. are ignoring. They want to say one side won and one yeah. side lost. They're both getting what they want. Mm -hmm. for, for me, Danny Ainge, it's all about shopping, like we talked about with the Lakers trying to get an extra pick. Is now here are some more things I can put together, go out and package and get a trade for one of these all-star wings. That's the thing is, how do we decide if this is a good move or not if we don't know where they're well, you have, going? But yeah. you, you, you never have a guarantee that you can trade for Jimmy Butler, but you have to put yourself in a position where I can at least try as opposed to where they are now. And I think that's what he's done. I, I think that's exactly what he's doing. And then the fact that if you can get a Jimmy Butler, now you can go to a Gordon Haywood and yep. say, listen, now we, got, we got Jimmy, we got Isaiah, we got this, you know, we, we got this great squad that just played in the, uh, in the Eastern Conference Finals, we just need a couple of more pieces. We got a big piece, and we want to add you to that yep. piece. And like you said, at the end of the day, I think for both organizations, this could be a real big win-win for both. Because you look at Philly, and you're talking about point guard last year, TJ. No disrespect to TJ. Yep. You know, as a point guard. And when a B was healthy, they were very competitive as a basketball team. Now you bring in Markel as the number one pick and a yep. point guard of the future. Ben Simmons coming back, who hadn't played at all last year, I mean, it looks pretty good for Philly as well. If he can stay healthy, if Joel Embiid can stay healthy. Well, there's but still, always let's, ifs. Let's, let's, there's let's, always ifs. ifs. Yeah. It's June. Everyone's healthy. Everyone's let's happy. That's right. Everyone's that. positive. Right. You're, always ifs. You've been in those rooms, though, where you guys are trying to decide, do we take this guy or not? How big a concern is there for the Celtics of, okay, we might have just dealt a guy who a lot of people think has a huge upside in this league for years to come? Well, I don't think it's a big deal for them because of the fact that they didn't really feel that he could play with Isaiah. They couldn't put them two on the court at the same time because they're both dominantly ball handlers. So mm -hmm. for them to be able to say, well, let's trade this and be able to get a guy at the third pick, like a Josh Jackson or somebody mm -hmm. like that, it makes them that much better as a basketball team. And now, obviously, if they don't use that pick for that and they want to pick that, you know, use that to Chicago for Jimmy, Jimmy Butler, Butler yep. I mean, like, like Amit said, it works out for both organizations. A decade ago, it's a similar but not the same situation. 93, right? No, no, a decade, not too that, not that long ago. 2007, <laughs> they traded a top I'm five pick. Chris Webber top five pick for Ray Allen. Yes. You get Ray Allen, and now because you have Ray Allen, Kevin Garnett, who up until then said, I'm not going to Boston, mm -hmm. said, okay, now I'm willing to listen. It's the same thing. You do this deal, and yes, you're giving up a great pick, but you're saying, I'm going to get a great player with it, and that way I can turn on Gordon Hayward and say, now nah, how do you like me? Oh, well, so Danny Ainge telling reporters this morning, Philly's offer was the best by, quote, a significant margin. He said he will likely take the same player at number three he would have taken at number one. Of wow. Course. Well, that, of course yeah. he's got to do that now. Yeah. You can't say, yeah, he's awesome. He's going to be a Hall right. of Famer. Penny Hardaway right. Chris Webber? Isn't that the comp? Oh, no. Uh, well, I mean, that's for, for Philly, the idea of right. uh, getting the number one pick. Yeah. Man. So.